So as we come to the end of the year, we are traditionally inclined to make resolutions, changes we'd like to see within ourselves. And many of these changes relate to bad habits that we have. Habits. Habits. You know, they relate to behaviors that we see in ourselves as a part of our personality that we'd like to change. Which is pretty much the definition of a habit. You don't call it a habit if it is something you do once. And if it's something that you do once, you probably don't make a resolution about it. Or if you do, it's it's kind of cheating because it's not a very hard one. It still can be a good resolution, though. If you, if you did something really terrible this year and you make a resolution never to do that again, that's, of course, an incredibly wholesome thing to do. Uh, but the harder ones and the more, therefore, uh, valuable ones are where we make a resolution to change our habits. And that's a really important concept from a meditation perspective, from a Buddhist perspective. Because Meditation is really all about habits. It is about building habits. It's about counteracting habits. Meditation is a mental training. And so training changes something uh, fundamental about our personality. It changes the quality of our experiences in some way, whether it's physical training or mental training. And so the determination, the resolution that we take at the end of the year, at the beginning of the year, to change is best followed up with some sort of regimen of training, you know? some sort of action. So I think it's probably a common thing for someone to make a resolution and then fail to follow up with anything further. The idea that being resolute is enough. I resolve not to get angry. I resolve to stop smoking. And then I'll just say, no, 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 no smoking for me. Hmm. You see, the inclination of the mind is still there. Our mind is still inclined towards smoking. That's a habit. And so following up our New Year's resolutions with training as a means of changing our habits is probably one of the most important parts of this tradition of New Year's resolutions. You know, if you want to lose weight, you can't just say, "Well, I'm, I'm going to stop gaining weight or stop, stop." You know, I'm going to not keep up this weight, and the weight is just going to disappear. Obviously, you have diets, and then you have exercise regimens that you take on. But even with exercise, even with losing weight, our inclination is not to diet, 
not to exercise if, if we're overweight. And so even there, mental training is incredibly important. Yeah, we were talking about Jitana recently on Discord. and it's, It was uh, something that I didn't think about, the fact that inclination, or Jitana, is in every single mind state. So we normally think of Jitana as being karma. Jetana is being, uh, what do we mean by karma? We mean jetana, but not all jetana is karmically active. We have every moment an inclination of mind. Some of the inclinations that we have, some moments are inclined in a good way. Some are inclined in a bad way. Some are not inclined in either a good or bad way, but just have an inclination and inclination to walk, inclination to talk, inclination for whatever reason, but not ethically charged, no greed, no anger, no delusion. But many are. Many of our habits are bad habits. Associated with obesity is often greed, laziness, and then of course a lot of guilt and shame and self-loathing. It can be trauma can can lead to addiction, right? using food as a means of dealing with coping with trauma, coping with depression, coping with lots of things. So meditation is a great way to allow us to make the changes we'd like to see in our lives because it trains the mind and lots of meditation types that you hear about are very specific in their training uh, probably the most common is just a training in being more calm so when, when you have anxiety you train yourself to be more calm and that works. You can become more calm. Other meditations types teach you to be more kind, more compassionate, more empathic. So they give you a new habit of mind, or they change your habit. So if you're a very angry person, there's meditations that teach you a new habit of thinking kind thoughts to uh, about others instead of being spiteful and hateful and so on even towards yourself but mindfulness is a little different mindfulness goes a little deeper because there are reasons why our habits persist and and increase uh, get worse, no? Our bad habits get worse, get stronger. And mindfulness addresses this. It addresses existing habits directly without really creating any new habits. Because even a, a meditation that teaches you to be more calm is only going to be a, a temporary solution. You know, for as long as you train your mind to be calm, you'll be calm. But any time you go back to doing an activity where your mind has to be active, that habit will change back. But mindfulness isn't quite like that. Because mindfulness is about simplifying our habits, about um, smoothing out the complexities of our interactions with things. So habits relate to our reactions to our experiences. Think of the habit of addiction. When you're addicted to something, it's almost like something you can't control. It's instantaneous. Whenever you see the object of your addiction or even think about the object of your addiction, you react to it and because of the charged excited nature of your relationship to the object of your addiction your your brain is constantly triggering memories of 
the thing, the object of your addiction. So you're constantly thinking about food or sex or music or whatever it is that you're addicted to, cigarettes, and immediately reacting to it, desire, wanting, needing, craving, clinging. And so mindfulness addresses this activity of reacting to our experiences. And it helps us to change fundamentally the way we react to anything, everything. Through the process of cultivating mindfulness, you observe become familiar with all of the many bad habits that you have. Mindfulness is so universal because it addresses everything. It's not specific to one uh, bad habit, one quality of mind that it's changing because it is present with all of your many uh, mental uh, habits. It can't stop you from coming in contact with things that you like or dislike or are attached to, but rather it stops you from attaching in the first place. It inclines the mind in a very simple way. It changes your inclination. It intercepts that, or the arising of the inclination. The inclination that says, this is good. I want this. That identifies it as something to be fixed something that I don't have and I can get, something that I have and I can get rid of, destroy, hurt, punish. Mm. It changes that. It gives you the inclination towards objectivity. You might say the inclination is an, is an inclination towards familiarity. So when you feel pain, rather than getting upset about it, inclining towards fixing the pain, removing the pain, you incline towards experiencing the pain, just experiencing the pain. So when we say to ourselves, pain, pain, this is a new relationship with pain. It addresses the habit head-on as it's happening. In the moment where we would have reacted to the pain, we didn't react to the pain. We experienced it. We faced it. We didn't tell ourselves, this is bad, this is a problem. We told ourselves, this is pain. Right? We changed. In that moment, we changed our habit. And the continuous, systematic, dedicated... Uh, cultivation of this new habit gradually loosens up our hold on all sorts of things. When we want something, when you think of food, thinking, or when you see food in your mind, or when you see food in front of you, seeing, when you smell food, smelling, when you taste food, tasting, even when you like food, liking, because it's a chain, it's a, it's a feedback loop. If you catch it anywhere, even at the moment where you've already decided this is good, I should get this. When you say to yourself, liking, you're breaking the chain so that that moment of liking doesn't lead to another moment of wanting, of needing, of striving for, of obsessing about. Because it's not just one moment of wanting, we feed it. We say, we want something, and we say, yes. We encourage the wanting. We say, yes, this is something worth wanting, worth getting. And we think about it again, and we 
augment and and that's how it builds you have might have a niggling sort of desire for something and then it builds and builds in your mind until you just have to go get it you can say to yourself all you want i'm going to resolve not to eat junk food i'm going to resolve not to have cigarettes and then when it comes up you say no no but it grows and grows and grows without mindfulness without something to change that habit to interrupt it it's really a, lo a lost cause you can do this with uh, there was the, the one of my most popular videos is about pornography and masturbation in regards to sexual desire rather than saying to yourself no 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 I'm going to abstain you know, look at the desire look at the pleasure big problem with addictions is that they're pleasurable they're associated with pleasure and honestly it, it's a strong or it's a strongly held argument that for that reason there's nothing wrong really with most addictions except that they are habitual you can't say that you're just going to be a little bit attached to something and furthermore you can't say that you're going to have a clear mind and still be addicted. All of the times that you are caught up in greed and anger, your mind is unclear. Your mind is off balance. It's not objective. So we get caught off guard when we lose things. We are unable to cope with change we are unwise because of our addictions because of our aversions and that lack of wisdom has clear consequences we suffer when things change we suffer from loss we suffer from adversity challenge competition we suffer mindfulness is an incredible tool something that is so simple in the theory and, and in its application and yet so powerful because it's really not any one thing you know the cultivation of kindness is a thing you develop kindness the cultivation of calm is a thing you cultivate calm and they last for as long as they last but you've cultivated that thing that habit Mindfulness doesn't exactly, I mean, you can say it cultivates a habit, but it's not a, a creation of some inclination. It's rather the reduction of any inclination. It's, it's, a, it's like a tree that stands tall, straight up, doesn't incline in any one direction. If a tree is to grow, it has to grow straight, otherwise it's liable to fall over in the wind. And that's what happens as we fall over because of our inclinations. No, not to say that there are good inclinations are not quite like that. They're good. Cultivating kindness is good. Cultivating calm is good. But they don't have the strength of of competing with or 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 uprooting our bad inclinations. The mindfulness gets to the root and purifies the mind in a very technical sense right? it's not about religious purity or, or spiritual purity it's just about a technical purity simplicity where we experience things as they are without any reactions without any judgments without any inclinations towards them so I thought that would be interesting to think about what are your resolutions for the new year? And how can mindfulness help you? Because most certainly mindfulness can help with any well-formed resolution. So, Happy New Year everyone. Wish you a Happy New Year.